Awe Amicus. The Fallout TV show has been released on Amazon to resounding praise. Everyone seems to love this show. However, many longtime fans of the games are less receptive to the new lore and reimaginings of many of Fallout's biggest elements. I am firmly unimpressed with the writing and execution of this show. At best, I find it to be decently mediocre storytelling. The aesthetic and feel of the world is very well done. I feel this is the biggest reason people think the show is well made. It looks and feels like a Fallout game. It's rich with gore and violence, as well as irreverent humor. If this show has proved anything, it's that gore and dark humor coated in Fallout paint is all any of these casuals need to be satisfied. However, the plot, writing, and characters are beyond subpar. This series doesn't feel like a TV show set in the wasteland of Fallout, but rather like Bethesda's Fallout 4 adapted into a serialized TV show. People seem to be incapable of writing good characters nowadays, and everyone seems to be lost in the aesthetics without thinking any deeper about the story or plot events. In the vast sea of dogshit media we have been inundated with, this show appears to stand a mile above the rest. But just because something mediocre came out in a sea of garbage doesn't mean it's actually well done. Now, while there are many issues with the show in its entirety, it's not all bad. I don't feel it's bad enough to make a video on each episode, and I'm sure many people will be doing that regardless. Like I said, it's decently mediocre. It's not as offensively bad as something like Rings of Power was. However, since there are still many flaws in it, I have decided to write this video about the three biggest issues I have with the show. I'll assume viewers have seen the show in its entirety, so I won't be giving long, contextual recaps for points as I go. Now, the three biggest issues I have are the ghoul retcon and new lore, the abysmal writing for Maximus character, and the vaults. Let's start with the ghouls. We are introduced to a ghoul character named Cooper Howard. The show then establishes that ghouls need a special elixir regularly or else they will become feral. This retcons so much of the lore of Fallout. If a ghoul needs this serum regularly to stave off becoming feral, then how did Cooper survive years inside that coffin without becoming feral? The show seems to follow the kid in a fridge logic that ghouls do not need to eat or drink to survive. Cooper Howard being able to survive for years in that coffin is evidence for as much. But we can see Cooper fighting off feral coughs on a daily basis without the serum. So how did he survive in that coffin for any substantial length of time? The show invented and introduced this anti-feral serum, and all it does is cause problems with the lore and the story. Ghouls are individuals that survived the Great War and somehow gained immortality from the radiation around them. Turning feral was never, and should not be, dependent on a magical liquid. On that same topic, being a ghoul does not give you Wolverine-style regenerating abilities. Ghouls have always been living corpses. They can live indefinitely, but they do not regenerate lost or damaged limbs. The reason ghouls look the way they do is because they can simply outlive most non-fatal damage done to them. The radiation somehow keeps them alive, but damage done by combat accidents and the passage of time are left with the ghouls permanently. That's why Set looks like Set does. Otherwise, there wouldn't be a distinction between ghouls and smooth skins. If the ghoulification undid any damage done to the body, then their faces wouldn't be rotten and their noses wouldn't fall off. Ghoulification is caused by prolonged exposure to radiation, not an instant ghoul poison injection by a crooked salesman. A character named Thaddeus is injected with gray juice and suddenly his bones, muscle, veins, and tissue regrow in an instant. 
When this happened in the show, I figured the man had given him some intense drug that made him hallucinate his foot getting better. Then he would proceed to keel over and die. But instead, this salesman has a vial of immortality juice. If ghoulification functioned in this way, then it would be the most coveted resource in the wasteland. After becoming a ghoul, Thaddeus later has an arrow go through his neck. He pulls it out and it simply heals. This explains why Cooper can just take machine gun fire to the torso and be fine. They made ghoulification into the ultimate state of being in the wasteland. Never taking damage, never dying of old age, never worrying about radiation levels, never having to eat or drink, but being dependent on a supply of mystery serum from who knows where. This is fundamentally not what ghouls are in the Fallout franchise. The only real similarity between the TV show's ghouls and the ghouls of Fallout is their appearance. And even that isn't executed correctly. Cooper does not look like a ghoul. He is just a bald man with gaunt eyes and no nose. The raider who married Lucy looked more like a ghoul after his face was maimed than Cooper does through the entire show. Obviously, they did this because they have a great actor playing Cooper and want to show off the handsome face they paid for. But these ghouls are fundamentally different from any iteration of ghouls we have seen in the Fallout franchise. It seems like they just took the aesthetic and made the rest up. These can't be a West Coast style of ghoul either, because this show takes place in locations we have been in during the first two Fallout games. Was Necropolis sitting on top of a massive store of ghoul fluid? Well, they must have, otherwise the place would only have been inhabited by ferals. And why would they all leave after their water chip was stolen? Since Bethesda made it clear that this show is canon, I guess it's set in stone that ghouls don't need to eat or drink to survive. So they've doubled down on ruining one of the biggest decisions the player makes in Fallout 1. Thanks, guys. No, no, fuck us fans for caring about the world of Fallout. Oh, di did I say caring? Whoops, I meant toxic fanboy seething and coping, right? Right. This show fundamentally changes the nature of ghouls in the Fallout world, and not for the better. Now they function more like vampires, but instead of blood, they need ghoul serum. It appears to me that the only reason for this was to have a get-out-of-wounded card for Thaddeus, and a drug for Cooper Howard to keep piping on and using for some short-sighted, inconsequential plot motivation. I ask you if you think that was worth retconning the entire franchise's lore on one of its most prominent and memorable elements. For me, the answer is clearly no. Next, we will talk about Maximus. Let me begin by saying the character of Maximus was written as a fundamentally bad character. He is a very bad guy. Not in the way Lucy is changed by the Wasteland into becoming a more grizzled and morally gray individual, but he is just a bad person. He is shown to be envious, vindictive, cruel, short-sighted, and incredibly malicious. We are introduced to him being bullied at the Brotherhood of Steel barracks. This could be a reason for him to hold grudges or ill feelings toward his fellow members, but instead they wrote him like a school shooter. People were mean to him and so he is cruel to them the first chance he gets. He actively takes pleasure in putting his fellow members in pain and seeing them in discomfort. How are people supposed to sympathize with this homicidal psychopath? He holds none of the values of the Brotherhood of Steel. For being raised in the cult that is the Brotherhood of Steel, it seems to have had no impact on him. He has no moral values. He was written to be a bleak comic relief. The writers unironically wrote a Brotherhood of Steel version of Finn from the Star Wars sequels. He is a cowardly, self-righteous, uncooperative, vindictive villain. We are first shown how he is bullied by the other Brotherhood members. Then he is accused of harming a squire. 
This character acts as guilty as he possibly can in every instance. The second the elder starts questioning him, he pulls his chin to his neck and begins to cry. This is the first of a few instances of him trying to be as guilty as possible. This stammering, murderous incel is then sent to be the new squire for a knight by the name of Titus. When Titus is attacked by a Yao Guai, he trips and hits his head on a rock. This somehow knocks him out inside the power armor. I'd just like to point out that later Maximus crashes head first into the ground from hundreds of feet up and isn't even concussed by it, but sure, whatever. Maximus takes the first opportunity he has to betray the Brotherhood. The writers accounted for this by having his knight spew the most retarded, insulting lines they could think of. I could believe they had a bullet point on their script that said, make the knight ask for it so the audience will feel Maximus is justified in letting him die. Regardless, Maximus watches his knight die so that he can take his power armor. After doing so, he goes on a power trip that lasts a few episodes. When the Brotherhood sends him a new squire, we discover it is Thaddeus, one of the boys who bullied him back at the base. Maximus proceeds to treat Thaddeus in the most cruel and vengeful ways he can, from purposefully putting Thaddeus in danger and pain to putting him in intense anxiety and fear for his life just for kicks. Maximus was written as an irredeemable incel punk. How are we supposed to root for this character? A few episodes later, Thaddeus and Maximus are shown celebrating their victory over a lake monster. Following Thaddeus' persistent requests, Maximus brands Thaddeus as his squire. Immediately after this, Maximus decides to awkwardly reveal his identity. Before Thaddeus' wound is even cold, Maximus reveals he is not the Knight Titus. He could have made Thaddeus swear on his life or the Brotherhood to keep the secret he was about to reveal. He could have not revealed it in the guiltiest way possible. But I swear to God, this show wants us to hate Maximus. They wrote him as the most vindictive, stammering, awkward character they could. It's like he is trying to act as guilty as possible in every instance. His first words after showing his face are, We can still be friends, and you and I just need to get our story straight. The obvious choice would be to tell how Knight Titus lost his life to a Yao Guai. The scars are evidence of as much. And how, out of duty to the Brotherhood, the Squire took the armor to carry on his knight's mission. Instead, Maximus stammers like a fish out of water in a conversation he just initiated. Thaddeus is right to assume Maximus is a cold-blooded killer. He tells Maximus that the Brotherhood will surely find out. He doesn't even condemn Maximus, he just asks him what happened. Instead of defusing the situation, Maximus again uses his power armor to bully everyone he comes in contact with. He says, I should have known better than to trust you. What the fuck, Maximus? Instead of rationalizing his actions or trying to explain, he actually tries to kill Thaddeus. They wrote this character as a psychopath. There are so many ways he could have revealed this to Thaddeus, but this was by far the most short-sighted, impulsive way you could have gone about it. You reveal your identity in the most conspicuous and guilty way. Then, the fellow indoctrinated squire is rightly suspicious and on edge about the situation. Why would your first choice be to act as intimidating and uncooperative as possible? And then what? Your solution is to kill him? Thaddeus locks Maximus into the power armor suit. I was rooting for Thaddeus this entire exchange. Really, from start to finish, Thaddeus is the MVP of the show. And for Maximus to plead for Thaddeus to let him out after trying to kill him only hurts Maximus' character more. 
Later, Road Roaches approach Maximus' stationary suit of power armor, and whoopity doo da, Lucy appears just in time to shoot them off. Wow. He travels with Lucy for a few episodes, continuing to be a comic relief character. During this time, they have a brief stay in a vault. Through some contrived bullshit, Maximus thinks Lucy is going to be killed by the vault dwellers. His response is to steal their fusion core for his power armor suit. Then he starts throwing and pummeling the vault dwellers without taking a moment to analyze the current situation for even a second. The show plays this off for laughs, of course, having Maximus meekly apologize and ask for someone to check on the vault dwellers. The show is pretty fast and loose without physical damage works, but some of those vault dwellers are definitely dead. I don't know if the showrunners know this, but blunt force trauma is a thing. Maximus is again portrayed as nothing more than a psycho, abusing his power at the first opportunity to do so. When he finally returns to the Brotherhood, he is brought before the Elder. He presents a decoy MacGuffin to the Brotherhood, and they rightly determine it's fake. I don't, wh why did he think that plan would work? It's just so stupid. This pathetic individual cries yet again. After bringing them the wrong head, he starts crying out, I can bring you to the real head. He gives them every reason not to trust him at every opportunity. Why the fuck they decide to trust him just reveals the incompetence of the writers. Then, the Elder goes full Darth Vader for some reason and gives Maximus the let's rule together. This is the most unearned, unsatisfying, bullshit, high IQ, wannabe twist the show wrote without any pretext or justification. What is this show? Bullshit, generic, inoffensive, post-apocalypse slop in Fallout paint. And, of course, at the end of the season, Maximus is somehow praised as a hero and gains the rank of knight. I don't know what I expected, but this is by far worse. What an irredeemable crybaby, incel, vindictive fool of a character. You can write a flawed character and still have them be endearing. Cooper Howard, the ghoul, is an example of one. This show seems to think that the audience likes Maximus, but goes to great lengths to make him as despicable as they can at every opportunity. They double down on this by having Lucy fall in love with him and tell him what a good guy he really is. People just don't know how to write characters anymore. Maximus is just the Fallout version of Finn from the Star Wars sequels, except despicably evil. Moving on. The third major issue I have with this show is its vaults. Not the individuals within the vaults or the massive contrived plot with the vaults and the cryogenetically frozen pre-war masterminds. The story with the vaults was actually my favorite part of the series. But this show has decided that each vault had a massive above-ground bunker above it with their vault door and big-ass numbers visible for miles. The vaults in this show are in L.A., known in the Fallout games as the Boneyard. This was the location of the Master's primary base in Fallout 1, the Cathedral. For any who didn't play that game, I'll give you a brief story rundown. In Fallout 1, the Master was using the Forced Evolutionary Virus, or FEV, to turn humans into super mutants. Regular irradiated surface people would often turn into giant dumb soldiers for the Master to use in his super mutant army. However, the Master was most interested in finding vaults that had not been opened yet. The lower levels of radiation and all-round better health of vault dwellers created a higher-functioning super mutant. He was desperately searching the wasteland to find vaults and those individuals for his army. Having a vault in the boneyard means the master would have most definitely found it and raided it during his conquest of the wasteland. 
Having the vaults exposed on the surface with giant signs is the dumbest shit I've ever seen. This guarantees the master would have found them. And don't say the door kept them out, the master would have gotten in there. The fact that he didn't is only because the showrunners never played or didn't look up the lore of the series. It's an utter disregard for source material, and once again, they shit on the world of the original games. This, and the ghoul issue, are not some small, inconsequential details the show can gloss over. It's not just dumb nerd stuff. It's the fundamental conflict of the original games. It retcons and shits on the games that created the franchise to begin with. Now, I don't care if people like this show. It's clearly made for the widest possible audience. Everyone except the diehard fans of the series. There seems to be some contention online about whether or not you're a fan of Fallout depending on your view of the show. The plebeians on Reddit love to tell you that the show is great and any complaints are just coping and seething from Fallout purists. I wouldn't say they aren't Fallout fans, because that's a retarded argument I don't have the time or energy to care about. I'd say the distinction is simply how much you are willing to engage with the game world. Imagine the Fallout franchise and the world is a big ol' ocean. People like me are down here scuba diving at the bottom. We've explored the surface levels, gone deeper to the middle levels, and now scan the bottom for as much information as we can find. We do this out of a love for the world and the lore. Most of the people that enjoy this show and shit on hardcore fans never get past the surface. It's not that they are not fans, we are all here in the same body of water, they just haven't gone deeper. And that's fine, they don't have to. I wouldn't fault someone for not engaging with this franchise at the same level as I do. However, when these people criticize and mock those of us that do care to be down here, it does make me lose faith in the Fallout community. If you enjoy the show for the surface level eye candy that it is, that's fine. However, shitting on people for legitimate grievances that don't matter to you because you are either not aware of the lore or you simply don't care about the lore is just silly. And again, I'm not saying you have to care about details and fundamental story beats from earlier games. But the people who have problems with the show do so because of the level at which they are willing to engage with the Fallout franchise. Somehow finding a way to fault fans for the level of care at which they engage with the franchise is how you destroy a fandom altogether. In summary, the show is mediocre. It's not my cup of tea. I think it's about on par with Fallout 4. Stripping away layers from the original world while turning up the Fallout aesthetic to 10. If people enjoy it, that's fine. This argument taking place online about the level of fan you are is such a stupid, divisive waste of time. People are justified in being upset about a show taking a shit on a world they love. If those details don't matter to you, that's fine. But this bullshit of who's a fan and who's not over the level of the investment in a game is the real toxic fan behavior. If you enjoy Fallout 4, you'll probably enjoy the show. If you didn't enjoy the show, then first, away, Amicus. If anyone is looking for a great substitute, I'd recommend you watch Mad Max 2, The Road Warrior. The second and third Mad Max movies are actually closer to the world of Fallout than this show is. The Fallout TV show isn't completely awful, it's just the pinnacle of inoffensive mediocrity under 30 layers of Fallout paint. And with that, Wale, amicus.